coming back to school with me We could have done it all so easily Hi, my name is Craig Thompson Wood. I'm your host on Teaching with Board Games here today to look at Subatomic, an atom building game by Genius Games. So Genius Games has for me right now like a really excellent track record, like a flawless track record in fact when it comes to their science games. Their science games take subjects which you would not imagine being able to build a game about and then somehow they build a game about it. And it's not only a game, but it's a good game, a really solid game with excellent mechanics in it for sort of fun play, really gets you thinking. So you can play the game even without any scientific knowledge. Like you're not going to go into this game already knowing how to build subatomic, you know, about subatomic particles and building atoms and things. So what they excel at is taking a game where the subject matter may be very dense and very difficult to understand and making it in such a way that as you're playing it, you're learning it. So have they succeeded with this game as they have with all others? Let me take you to the report card and I'll tell you all about it. So looking at the number of players for Subatomic, I'm going to give it a B. It has between, it plays between two to four players. So in my books, that's a B. For learning for Subatomic, I'm going to give it the A plus again. So I think Genius Games has really just knocked it out of the park with this game. It has so many things going on in it, not only in the the knowledge of the subatomic particles and how they're working and, how, and the parts of the atom and just understanding more of these things, but also introduces a lot of different scientists who are responsible for the study of these particles and different types of things. They, they include seven different scientists in the game, which just to me, is an excellent launching off point in a discussion. So as you're playing the game and you want to talk about Marie Curie or, or uh, Schrodinger or Einstein or, or one of these other scientists that are in the game, it, they have information in there in the game to talk about their role in the, the development of the learning of subatomic particles. It's just after that, it's just it's a great entry point to, to learning about those things. But also just in the content itself, like I could take this game to my grade five students and we could play it. The mechanics of the game are such that it's easy enough to understand. And as you're playing it, you will learn about the things as you're playing it. And especially if you encourage or insist upon the use of the proper scientific terminology as you're playing, there's just going to be so much learning that's happening during this game. Uh, you could go into this game knowing absolutely nothing about subatomic particles. And at the end of the game, no stuff about subatomic particles. You may not be an expert. And I don't think even in multiple plays of the games you'd be an expert, but you'd certainly have a good foundation upon which you could then build the knowledge um, through other instruction. But to me, I mean, trying to take an, a subject like this and, and teach it, which normally would be just taught out of a textbook, with nothing else to kind of ground that information to and link it to would just I would, I would be out. I would be right out. I would not be into it. I would not understand it. I would not get anything out of it. It would just be way beyond me. But through a game like this, just in my experience with the game so far, I, I feel like, yes, I have a great understanding now of these things. And, and it's, it's, um, it's wonderful. I mean, and I can, I've only played it a couple of times, but it's given me an, a great appreciation for exactly what these games do. And that's what Genius Games shines at, is these scientific games which deal with uh, these incredibly dry topics, but making them into incredibly fun games. So the learning happens and it happens well and it happens easily, painlessly, A plus. For fun, I'm gonna give the game an A. I give it the A and being exceptional because it's, it's a good game. It has the different fun elements in there and just different uh, strategies you can employ and tactics. So even when you're playing one game, you try doing things in, um, you try employing different scientists. There's going to be different scientists. You know, you, there's seven scientists in the game. Only four are going to be present in any one game. So that's going to add different varieties into the game. But just the fact, like I said before with some of the Genius Games uh, games, that you're taking a subject, like I said this before already, I know, but I'm repeating myself, but it, it bears saying, taking a subject which is so incredibly dry and boring, which would only be taught through textbook work before and turning to something as fun as this is absolutely phenomenal. So, Giving it the A is kind of a no-brainer for me, and I would, if you're a high school or university level or whatever level teacher of, uh, or, or homeschooler that's learning about physics and atoms, then I would say this game 
if you play this game in your classes or wherever you're doing your instruction, your students are going to thank you. For time, I'm going to give the game a B. It says the game plays between 40 to 60 minutes, which is, you know, I guess if you could have the game set up before the class comes in, you could have it ready to go. Um, but there's nothing saying that you couldn't, you have to play it right to the end. It's one of these games where the game ends when the last player places their last cube on the goals. Now, that could be mitigated by having less cubes, or you could just play to a certain amount of time, either way. So the game does have that ability to um, factor that in. So it's nice that the game's not super, super long. Like already 40 to 60 minutes is not, not a short amount of time. And I think that's a, a reasonable amount of time to expect for the game. It's, but once you get it learning. So at the, at the first couple plays as you're teaching and learning and things like that, it may take a little bit longer, but again, just cutting it at a certain time or reducing the number of cubes that students have to use can uh, modify the time length for you to make it more suitable for your class needs. So. Uh, be on time for me. So for cost, I'm going to give the game a B. Uh, I was able to pick up this game at Level Up Games for about $36. And, you know, playing four players, so if you're going to be playing this in a class setting, it could get a little bit expensive. But when, again, I always say, when you look at a game like this, you have to look at the value in terms of how much play are you going to get out of this. If you are teaching this subject matter, then you are definitely going to be using this every time you are teaching this subject matter. You're going to be bringing it out and you're going to be getting students playing it and you'll be playing it multiple times during the course of the unit. So I definitely think that it's worth it. And whether you do it as part of a center or whether I say you're getting the whole class to play at one time or doing it as part of a club or something, the game is going to see use because it's so useful in helping students understand the subject matter. Why wouldn't you? So um, definitely a B for me. All right, let me take it to the table and I'll show you how this game is played. So what I have set up here is a two player game of Subatomic. So I have the green player on this side and the orange player over here. Um, before I get into the game though, I just want to show this one. This is what I've been talking before when I was, uh, in the report card where if you want to know more about the, the game and the science behind it, this is the science behind Sambatomic. And this is, I love the way this is laid out because you have here, like, this is what's happening in the game. This is the science to explain why this is happening this way in the game. So the game is not just a bunch of random mechanics and things strung together just because, hey, this is a fun way to do it. No, it's done that way because there's a re it, it ties in with the science behind it. So it talks about the energy, quarks, protons, neutrons, protons, uh, photons, gamma rays, electrons, atoms and elements, and so on including then there's a, a brief biography of the scientists uh, involved with the thing. So it, it explains all of that behind. It's just a really great way to launch the teaching towards the understanding of subatomic particles. All right, so getting right down to the game. So when you set up, you're just setting up these things. So you have your single um, particles here. You have your other particles, your multiples down here. And so there's always going to be four for each. In a two player game, I the Annihilate card, so this, this is for a four-player game, a three-player game, a two-player game, so I'm putting it there on the two-player game, as indicated by the 2P. And you put down these special goal token, uh, special bonus tokens here on these ones, so like plus two points. These are things that the players get. The first person who puts one of their goal cubes onto one of these spaces will take the, the, the token and gain the reward. Uh, scientists up here are going to give you different bonuses. Um, so like uh, Joseph J. Thompson here, take any one subatomic card from your draw pile and shuffle it into a discard pile. So the first person to buy this one gets four energy and then five energy and then the last person six energy. If you're playing in a four player game, then the other people don't get it. But they've got Schrodinger, they've got Marie Curie, they've got uh, Maria Mayer, all, uh, Einstein, a lot of these different names which you may or may not have heard of before. I mean, Einstein, I think we've all heard of Einstein. Marie Curie is very famous for her uh, study of radiation. And so these are the energy tokens. Now every player is going to start off the game with um, four up quarks, four down quarks, and some photons. And these are going to um, be your starting hand. So each player is going to take four cards from their starting hand. So we'll start with the green player. So we'll give the green player the start player token. So up, 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 down, and a photon. So in looking at the thing at the boards, let me just move these off here. These indicate to you what your actions on a turn can be. So 
An up, up, and a down can give you a proton on here. A up, down, down can give you a neutron here. Or two photons can give you an electron. So you, these things are the these these um, transparent domes here. These will go like so on there, and they will. When you get your first electron, it goes there. Your second electron goes there, and you have three. So one for your electrons, one for your photons, and one for your neutrons. Okay, so those, that's what that's going to indicate. So each player is going to take turns playing the cards that they have, and then discarding. You can also oh sorry, I meant to show you this. They have the actions on the thing here, which is always nice to do to um, help mitigate the game, make it go faster. So your four main actions, you can build up your atom, which I just showed you with doing that. You can claim an element card. So claiming an element card in here, if you have the right things for it, which is you're not because you, know, you only have four cards and this one's going to take four, five, two. Like your, your cards all right now be, being single things don't have enough to get you what you need. So you're definitely not getting those yet. That will be later. Uh, buying deck building cards. So you're buying cards here to build up your deck and then taking energy tokens. Okay. And then energy action. So for one energy, you can swipe any row for two energy. You can draw one card or for three energy, you can annihilate. So for X energy, you can annihilate two of your cards. Now annihilating your cards is just you're getting rid of these cards like the up courts and things. If you don't need these things anymore as the game gets on, it gets further on, you're, you're not needing these as much anymore. You're going to have these cards in there and they're much better to get what you need. So therefore you're just going to use these to um, build up and such. And then these just become a liability. They become you know, trash in your hand. So you're using the annihilate to get rid of the cards from there. So yeah, so maybe I'm doing up, up, down, and I'm going to put in a, a uh, photon. And then the next player here uh, is going to shuffle up. And one, two, three, four. And they have down, down, photon, photon. So they can take the two photons, make a thing. Now you can also take the two energy, putting it face down, and just and that's where you can just take two of these energies here to do different things. Uh, with these cards here, the what shows at the top is what you will get. So if you were to buy this card, it goes into your discard pile immediately. And so then when your discard pile reshuffles and you get it back in, then you can start to get this on its own. So instead of having to pay for neutrons into your atom here, you can just get one neutron, which you can add to your atom, or you can add um, to make, to buy other things. Uh, it just becomes more efficient or to be, again, to be getting the elements that you need up here. Uh, so the, the top shows what you're getting. The bottom shows the cost. So it costs uh, two neutrons and one uh, photon, proton, and then two protons, one neutron. Also, if you're buying anything, at, the first row costs nothing additional, but anything in this column here is going to cost one extra energy. Here's going to cost two extra energy. Here's going to cost three extra energy. So if there's a card that you desperately want, you might be willing to pay the extra for it. So this one here, two protons, two energy. So it's going to cost you two protons and two energy to get it. What you need to remember too, though, is that you, when you play this card, you're playing it for one or the other, not both. So it's two protons or two energy, not both. The ones that do have both will have the oval around them like such. This one can be played for two protons and two neutrons at the same time. So that is one to remember there. So getting these cards here on the bottom row with the multiples, that's how you're eventually going to be able to buy your element cards up here. And in the game, you're, you're, you're uh, building some of these simpler um, elements from the periodic table of elements. So you're getting the helium, lithium, beryllium, and boron. So uh, there's no helium out here currently or boron, but you know, they're showing here these different elements. That's what you're going for during the game. So the first person, say for example, one person were to get the beryllium and get it. So the numbers at the bottom represent how many points that you're getting for it. And as you're putting, so if, a, if the one, let's say green player were to get the beryllium, they can put one into the beryllium. And then if, or it also gets one beryllium. And let's say at the end of the game that green has had eventually got four beryllium and orange only got two beryllium. That means that the green player is going to be getting three points for every beryllium card, whereas the orange player is only going to get two points for every beryllium card. So whoever has the most in that 
end goal space will get the bonus for the cards. I mean, so the idea is that you're just using your quarks, your your and your your uh, your up quarks, your down quarks, your photons initially to be purchasing new um, particles here. The new particles will eventually allow you to buy bigger particles. The bigger particles will eventually allow you to start buying elements. And then once you have the elements rolling in, it's um, you know, you start to use the scientists for their different abilities to help you to get these things, and you're just filling these in. Whoever fills in the, uh, when you place your last of your goal cubes, so these are your goal cubes, whoever places their last one into the end goal set here will trigger end game, and then you tally up your points and determine the winner. And that, in a very quick sense, is how you play subatomic. So if you hadn't already told from my review, I absolutely love this game. I think that Genius Games has done it once again. They've absolutely knocked it out of the park with this amazing game. And I know I'm always repeating myself, and I'm starting to sound like a gushing fanboy, but this is really where Genius Game excels. It's these science games which take matters of scientific studies that would you wouldn't believe could be made into a a game, you know, maybe just you know a boring trivia game or something like that, but they turn it into a game with modern day game mechanics, make it interesting and fun, and you actually learn without having to, like I say, just like okay, answer this trivia question kind of thing. It's just excellent. I mean, they really are head and shoulders above anybody else who's doing this kind of thing. I know there are other companies out there doing this kind of thing, but Genius Games really sets such a high bar for everybody else. If you're looking for games with science materials, for games with uh, which teach about science topics, my first stop would be to look at Genius Games because they are absolutely amazing at what they do when it comes to these science games. And I think that one thing I love about it is just that it's so accessible that you don't have to go into the game knowing anything at all about subatomic particles. You just go in and start playing the game and you come out having learned about subatomic particles. And it's just amazing. <laughs> um, and so it's not going to necessarily reward even the person who knows the most about subatomic particles. So it's, again, not like your typical trivia game. So people who already go in knowing aren't going to have some kind of advantage over the people who don't know anything about subatomic particles. It's just is what it is, right? And it's the game mechanics in itself. And you're, 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 you're playing the game. You're having fun, which is the important part. And through all that are doing the learning. And this is, this is to me, the, like, the whole mission of what I'm doing here is taking these these kinds of topics which are extremely boring and extremely hard to learn from a textbook and turn them into a way you can learn that's actually fun and motivating for students to do. So 100% recommend this game if you are teaching this subject matter or trying to learn the subject matter. So that's going to be it for Subatomic. If you know of any other games uh, particularly other game companies other than Genius Games. I'm quite familiar with a lot of their different games. Uh, I still haven't played all of them. I want to get that periodic game, for example. But if you know of other companies out there that are doing things like this and think that they have great material that you'd like me to do on my channel, then please let me know in the comment section below. I love to hear about things that other people are doing out there, other game companies, and give them a chance to, to share their products, share their ideas and what they're doing on my channel here because I just want to I just want to share my knowledge with all the people out there who are watching on how we can increase our effectiveness in the classroom as teachers or as, as students by learning in ways which is going to be fun and motivating and just I think games are for that are great for that but if you have any other topics uh, whether it be books you'd like me to talk about or topics of discussion or maybe you want me to do a playthrough of subatomic which i'm probably going to be doing in the near future leave me that message in the comment section below love to hear from the viewers as it helps me to give you relevant content and that's going to wrap it up for today's episode until next time i'm craig thompson with your host on teaching with board games saying thanks for coming to the classroom are you coming back to school with me